So uh, this is a meeting about uh, the LTO and IPA, I guess, as usual. Uh, so uh, the last uh, meeting happened, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I should have, okay. Hmm. No raised twice, that's interesting. Yeah. So, okay, no, it's all correct. Uh, so uh, the last meeting happened uh, three years ago, so there's uh, quite a few new things. Uh, so I will just go quickly through it and then we can uh, start a discussion. Uh, so I think the biggest change that happened in this timeline is that most of the, you know, not most, but some distros, you know, the better ones, has switched to LTO by default. Uh, so um, Martin Leschka did most of the work on the SUSE side, and I don't know if we have uh, someone for Red Hat. I guess Jakub was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's sort of uh, what uh, we was aiming at the beginning, so I'm very happy that, uh, uh, that it happened. Uh, so that also made us to fix some long-standing problems, like uh, the simple versioning, because we need it. And uh, there's a new IPA modref pass, which I was speaking on the last virtual meeting about. Uh, it was started by my student, uh, David Cepelik, and now it works by default. Uh, there was quite a lot of work on ICF uh, to uh, uh, you know, make it merge things again because it stopped merging things over the years. And uh, there was uh, work on the function cloning, which was uh, motivated by uh, exchange benchmark, but uh, hopefully it's useful for other things. So that uh, was uh, done by, uh, well, ah, I forgot. Hmm? Martin, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. And uh, there was, uh, yeah, some scalability improvements so we can compare Firefox and Clunk in the reasonable time. Uh, improving of the bytecode format. Uh, the LO2 was retuned, so it's doing more inlining because before we didn't see that much of improvement at O2 for LTO, and now it's slightly better. Uh, there is uh, IPSRA, which is uh, you know fast changing uh, the function signatures, you know replacing uh, values passed by reference and so on. Uh, there is a dumping tool, which was one of those uh, Google Summer of Codes uh, projects. Uh, it was had by uh, Martin Liška. And uh, there is a ZSTD compression, which is faster. And there is a better uh, type-based alias analysis for C++, which uh, makes quite a difference on uh, yeah, C++ uh, disambiguation. Uh, Martin Liška worked with the author of the mod linker to get uh, mod uh, working with uh, GCC. Uh, which is good, so we now have three linkers which are working. And because Gold is not very actively maintained, uh, I think it's important that we have a new one. Uh, there is a better tooling, so the make no longer need, need the plus uh, so to make linking parallel, because the job server integration has finally been solved, also by Martin. Uh, there is uh, work on making LTU uh, for Linux kernel, which was started by Andy Green, but he has no longer time to do it. And therefore, Martin and Jirka Slabi has uh, uh, stepped in. And uh, Tom was working on faster GDB, so it doesn't take uh, an hour to make a breakpoint, because that was pretty much the time you know, I needed to make a breakpoint in the Firefox. And uh, there is uh, DVZ compression support, which was also your work. So that's uh, what happened in the last uh, three years. So we have the idea of what's going on. And there is a very brief uh, slide about the plans, and I guess we can start uh, speaking uh, whatever uh, we are interested in. So the first four items are things which are sort of in the work. Uh, so I have some patches for uh, simple versioning support, which is not as ugly as what we have currently. Uh, there is, a, uh, you know, I'm planning you know, or slowly working on IPA PTA uh, and unification because the patent has expired, so we can use the technology. And uh, there is uh, work on improving jump function by Martin. And uh, yeah, I need to clean up the IPA mode ref because it has somehow evolved uh, from the original features to new features. And you know, the code base needs uh, uh, some, some love. So that's uh, four things which are uh, uh, being done. So I don't know. Uh, 
if, uh, yeah, maybe Martin wants to say something. No? Richard wants to say something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are still not through your list, right? Hmm? There are still four items on the list. No, yeah, 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 but those are sort of more experimental. Uh, so yeah, you know, we can speak about it. You know, I would like to make VPA multi-threaded because it's a, it's the main bottleneck of, uh, of the compilation right now. You know, the more CPUs you have, more time you have to wait for this for the VPA. Uh, but uh, since uh, you know, I was always hoping that one of these uh, parallelization projects will land to the main line, and we will have something like thread safe garbage collector allocation but uh, it's not going to happen, or what's the current status? So I think we, we've kind of identified the, the very too many roadblocks in even the most simplistic threading in, in, the, in the actual mm -hmm. summer of code project that tried threading, yeah, right? That was the, the second attempt in uh, basically using the, the LTO infrastructure for partitioning and forking instead mm -hmm. of doing threading, yes, which kind of worked, but it, in, in practice it turns out that it's slower than doing I.O. and real LTO. So forking is slower than mm -hmm. writing to disk and reading back in. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I so have... so that, that's basically the, the state, but uh, I think there, are, there should be points for threading VPA and that might be small enough to not run into the very many issues, but only into many issues. Yes. Uh, like yeah, to say yeah, yeah. the garbage collector <laughs> allocator mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. But so basically, the, the main thing with the VPA is that uh, it's spending one third by loading the data uh, approximately, and one third approximately by inlining, and then then one third by the rest. You know, streaming is parallel, so it doesn't take uh, that much of time. But yeah, the other passes sum up together. And uh, so I was thinking if there is a possibility to to get the streaming in uh, in parallel, which is a lot but, of allocations but and a lot of fun. The, the complications that we are doing the the tree merging mm -hmm. in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, together yeah. with the, the with the read in that means that that's that's a serialization point because you you have the basically the shared pool of trees mm -hmm. which you try to merge into mm -hmm. from multiple threads yeah, yeah. I, i'm sure there are great data structures doing that lockless <laughs> somehow uh, and, and the garbage collector yeah, well we can just have n pools of garbage instead of one Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I think the hash tables generally are okay for uh, for parallel lookups because uh, no, the, the the hash table is more or less uh, stable. So you know, adding new tree is expensive operation, uh, and uh, yeah, lookups should be fine. So my sort of plan was to try to finish uh, this uh, merging uh, using the on this data instead of building the tree in memory. So you know, build. No, work with the picklet, yeah. uh, picklet trees, and these picklet trees, uh, you know, will get merged, and then you just uh, allocate the trees which one uh, the merging, which could be done in a deterministic order. Because the other problem is that we don't want, uh, you know, the parallelism to produce different binary every time, and if we allocate trees in different order, we will get different IDs and things will diverge. So possibly, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess uh, doing doing the merging on the on the on disk mm -hmm. uh, representation is going to speed up this thing a little bit anyway because it's it's not not going to be very much because uh, all the all the garbage all the, the memory we allocate for materializing the tree before eventually throwing it away again is is. GGC free, so it should mm -hmm. be all quite cash hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but it's, it's, still... it's probably quite nice to the cache, the, the mm -hmm. whole read in process. So yeah, we are processing the data about one third of the speed of the decompression. Yeah. So, so, what's, uh, what's, so what's, what's probably yeah. the slowest is, is the deserialization itself mm -hmm. with all the bits shifting, shuffling. 
right, of the bit packs. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. if one can so if somehow you... skip that and do it in a more efficient way, mm -hmm. that's going to be the thing that's the driving the speed up, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, that, that's, that was pretty much my plan, you know. First, uh, finish this implementation. So we spread uh, the bit back into some kind of header, which tells how long it is, how long uh, are the bits which we are comparing, and how long are the bits which we don't compare, because we don't compare everything. And I think then, we, we compare everything that we stream, because otherwise uh, it doesn't make sense. No, no, uh, no. Of, of course, we don't stream everything. Well, no, 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 there are things like uh, debug info, which we don't compare uh, exactly. Debug info is on the side, so I am not sure. Yeah, there are things which are streamed, but they are not compared, uh, and that's intentional. That should be a bug. No. <laughs> that they are, you know, it's, it's really like, uh, yeah, this. Uh, I think we are, we are kind of optimistically not comparing pointers to the parent trees, for example. Right, because we no, eventually no, no. merge them. Uh, we, yeah, for so, example, so edges are not. Yeah, are for not example, compared. you cannot uh, cannot compare the translation unit uh, pointer because uh, that's yeah, we, so we, we are different not on every we, unit. We are not comparing. We are never comparing three edges. We are co comparing. While well, we are comparing, we do compare three edges, mm -hmm. right? Even to the to to the parents, but as we want to. Merge mm -hmm. across translation units. The translation unit parent can change. That's true. Yeah. 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 So. But it's probably something we could fix in the representation as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Because we we don't need the translation unit anymore. Well, actually, I think it would be useful for some things like you know, if you make the ODR warnings, uh, you usually point to the same location in the file because uh, you know there are two includes from different uh, translation units, which are having different defines before. So we are making this kind of ridiculous warnings, which is pointing to the same line of the code twice and saying that this type is different. And at least, you know, if he was able to say that this is uh, this line from this uh, unit and this is uh, from different unit, you would be having a better chance to... Uh, yeah, so I think this is a useful information, which we should keep around. For, but, for the diagnostics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for diagnostics, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe, uh, so we have a plan to make the VPA multi-threaded. Uh, I started to learn how to yes. make, I wrote my first multi-threaded program, you know, a couple of weeks ago, so I know how it works. And, and uh, the other thing is that uh, that's a long time on my to-do list, you know, you can make the VPA to be incremental. So when we partition the program, we can partition it in the stable way. Uh, so if you modify one source code, you know, we don't need to rebuild everything. So uh, that would be useful for a compiler edit cycle, like, uh, yeah, you don't need five minutes uh, to uh, to wait for uh, a rebuild of Firefox each time, you know, we will wait only for two minutes, which might be improvement. Yeah, usually the, the, the compile edit cycle is not using LTO. Yeah, exactly. I think it's only useful if you are debugging uh, something which goes wrong with LTO. Uh, yeah, so we can make a little pool, you know, how many people had to debug LTO code. <laughs> I'm sure Jakub did, you know, I did many times, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some people who, who seems to have been debugging uh, LTO code. So sometimes things go wrong and uh, waiting for, you know, five minutes of recompilations and 10 minutes for GDB to start an hour to make a breakpoint is not the optimal, optimal setup. So I'm happy it's improving. Uh, so that's something which I put on the summer of code, but uh, so far it was not picked. Uh, there's uh, the plan to bypass the ISM just because it makes uh, you know compilation a couple of percent faster. So you know if you if you compare the build time with LTO with GCC and Clunk, you know we are generally faster with, than Clunk uh, if you don't do debug info. If we do debug info, then we are much slower than Clunk, and it is because we produce a lot of debug info and we pass it through uh, assembler <laughs> one extra time. Uh, so I believe that, you know, if we got the direct output of the object files uh, from, uh, you know, with the picklet LTO, so we don't need to rewrite all the backends, uh, this would be a noticeable improvement. You know, we would probably be able to match uh, Clunk at least with G1 or something like that, uh, which we don't at the moment. Yeah, so of course, ideally, we would not be doing all the copying of the early debug at all but just have the final link reference the correct bits from the already on disk mm -hmm. early debug. Yeah, yeah. 
which we currently put into yeah, different yeah, named sections, mm -hmm. which is a problem. But eventually, we'll, we'll, uh, Martin eventually will arrive at the point that, that, we can, that we can open an alternate assembler file mm -hmm. and, yeah, kind of have uh, a way to produce a different ELF container for just the early debug. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm planning working on that, and there was one roadblock, which was the stops debugging support, which we removed, so now it's easier, so I can continue on the project. So because of that, I removed a couple of targets, which are obsolete, to, yeah, make my life easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, you wanted to speak? Yeah, it's good to see that the discussion is starting, you know. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, it's actually a completely different topic, maybe. Uh, some, so some compilers uh, enable LTO by default certainization levels. Is there any kind of appetite for that or? I mean, you well, enable vectorization by default, that's why I kind of thought. Uh, yeah, I didn't think of uh, adding uh, LTO to O2 or O3. Uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> if there are any opinions on that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, in the way it makes sense. Makes sense. I didn't think of it though. So. So we do have this issue that um, we generate extra symbols from the Ltrans stage that are well, they are hidden, but they are still there, mm -hmm. and may confuse things. In, in some way, um, I, I'm not sure if, if there's a way to, to avoid these symbols or make them uh, thrown away by the link editor somehow. Well, uh, my plan is that if you do the incremental linking, uh, at the moment we, we don't do VPA at the incremental linking, we just uh, produce the code in one thread. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, but you can convince uh, yeah, GCC to do the incremental linking with the real code. And then I think uh, I was simply thinking of mangling the names, so uh, they will have the random seat and the other thing, which would be well, the first. They, I eight. think they have the, the random seat it's right now. Done, right? But but still, they are, there's there's more symbols in the symbol table than than. Well, there are usually of. fewer symbols, but the symbols are surprising. That's true. They have this random uh, suffixes yeah. and uh, names, so the static variable can become a global symbol if. The program is partitioned in the in the in the way that it's used by multiple partitions. I don't know. I didn't see uh, many tools confused with it. And since we built things by default with uh, LTO for distro, I think people got used to the extra symbols. Probably yes. You know, the, it will never be completely transparent, so there will be some little details. Uh, well, you can you can just produce. Uh, assembler files you concatenate and, and then just really have local labels for the cross references and not symbols mm -hmm. and, and have a very, very large assembler file to assemble. You can, yeah. <laughs> and then Gus takes a lot of time so to process well, which them. Is, which is why well, yeah. maybe there's a way to, to emit these symbols in ELF that tell the link editor it can throw them away. Maybe there's a way to I don't know, have an extra section specifying all those symbols, uh, uh, discardable symbols, and then BFD could throw them away? Yeah, there are some extensions, so I think that should be possible to, to yeah, well, implement you this. Yeah, well, either use some visibility that makes it not be emitted in the final object, or uh, the, the various linker, particularly BFD linker, has the possibilities to, to internalize symbols matching certain names, of, for instance. So if the, if the names would be prefixed by something recognizable, mm -hmm. then you would basically do foobar star and mm -hmm. internalize all these symbols. And we would have to add a mode that actually throws them away instead of just making them local. 
Yeah, so it's maybe possible with the Linker script, right? I didn't think of yeah, it yeah, uh, because exactly. we already have these suffixes, which is LTO, you know, dot LTO something. Always use prefixes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's much, much faster to mm -hmm. match prefixes yes. than yeah, yeah, suffixes. Yeah, yeah, that we can, that we can <laughs> make to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can make the prefix be suffix, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, that, that sounds like a pretty simple solution, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And well, then they may end up being local symbols in the local symbol table, but they don't, well, that doesn't matter then. There, there can be clashes be between local symbols. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, OK. I will, I will try to remember this, because that, that would make situations less annoying. Like Martin has run into it that if you are repeating the incremental linking, you might get a symbol clash because GCC will twice use the symbol of the same name and it has no way of knowing it because we don't know what the symbols are used outside of the LTL world. Yeah, so, so I, I think are, that the last time we ran into it was with Giuliano's uh, LTO based parallelization. So when you build a single object file with L in multiple trans uh, L trans units, you get some extra symbols in the object file. And if you are very unlucky, the other symbol, uh, the under, other object file you also built this way gets the same symbol and then you get a clash. Mm -hmm. and, and if we could remove those symbols during the, the link, uh, yeah, during yeah, the yeah. partial so link, doing that incremental would be great. link, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mean basically throwing them away already at input to the linker? Yeah, yeah. we have chalk. <laughs> so basically, you have a single object file. We, we, we they see only this via multiple entrance things, via multiple entrance things. Mm -hmm. uh, but they need to refer to each other. Mm -hmm. And for that, we create a hidden symbol, mm -hmm. right? And then we partially link that into a not LTO IL object file, and, but the symbol name is still there, right? And if you do that for the next object file, the same dance, you can get clashes between them for the final link of the executable. And so, so you want to get the, yeah, the link script base? should do yeah. the job here. Yeah. So basically, the, the, even the partial link of this relocatable object file should get rid of the hidden LTO symbols we only generated because we have these cross hmm. object uh, references. Uh, I think that's currently not possible, but it shouldn't be hard to implement in, 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 mm -hmm. in, the, yeah, yeah, in the linkers. Yeah. Uh, and I would probably assume, do it in a similar way as, as we do it with the linker script or the command line options that basically everything matching certain FN matches, I mean, what you can do remove them. Yeah, yeah, you can post factum, you can, after creating the target over you can remove the symbols with object copy but yeah as, as you said it's not <laughs> that's not so nice yeah just a, a quick question could you explain what is the issue of uh, bypassing as um uh, that's uh, what I quickly mentioned you know what we do currently is that on the compile time uh, you know we output the bytecode uh, but we pickle it into the assembler file, which is run through the assembler, and that takes time because the files are big. So, you know, if you just output the object file directly, which uh, we can do, but not perfectly, uh, then uh, we would save some compile time. So that's just compile time optimization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the enabling LTO by default at certain O options, I think one issue to uh, consider is uh, uh, larger projects like GCC and LLVM uh, have those issues where you have many, many binaries which link statically the mm -hmm. same huge library, then without some locking, if you do parallel make, then you usually run out of memory because well, you yeah, that should fill be. in slash temp or something similar. Yeah, hopefully that sort of can in longer term be solved by the job server, right? Uh, at least we don't start the five times 64 threads. You know, we, we wait for the job server to decide which is improvement over the past. 
uh, but we still yeah the VPA takes a lot of memory. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Usually, you, what I see is that we yeah copy all the VPAs into temp and so so fill mm. fill up the temp and then then we start slowly because yeah you yeah, have yeah. many many jobs at once uh, yeah. randomly yeah, from those ends. Yeah, I was thinking if the make can be some, you know, the job server can be somehow extended to know that this is the expensive task and you should not uh, do too many of them at once. Yeah. So yeah. have like two, dif two, two different minus J, you know, 64,1 or something like that and have a classification of heavy and not heavy. Uh, that's the best I could think of because uh, how yeah, else? But yeah. The question is, it's, it's hard to guess what will be an expensive task because. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, and you even see, with LTO, it could be very small, mm -hmm. small job, and you don't yeah, care. Yeah. Man. yeah, in GCC we can sort of uh, guess it because we know the number of files which are on the input, and we can probably calculate uh, the overall size and decide on heaviness. But yeah, that, that's very heuristical. So, and I still believe Richie is planning working on System D job server daemon, which. Because the, the situation with the with the make is that they def, um, they came up with uh, the named pipe, and it's a quite nice transparent mechanism. So maybe other build builder build systems like Ninja or Mason can adapt to this uh, communication mechanism, so we can eventually end up with more yeah more tools which respect. Uh, yeah, how many threads can, they can take and, uh, yeah. Because I wanted to write a patch for mode linker, for instance, but what's, what's difficult about it is that at the beginning, the, the linker wants to run the linking in parallel, and at some point, there's, a, there's invocation of GCC LTO, for instance, and at this point, you need to give up all the acquired tokens and leave it for GCC because GCC will, yeah, spawn the new threads and then give it back. So it's, it's not simple. Yeah, actually, with uh, O2, you know, having LTO by default, I think it will also surprise people which are shipping static libraries, which uh, you know we try to avoid, but a lot of people still do. And we don't have any stability between the GCC releases, so all the object files will break. Uh, yeah, which generally it would make sense to make the uh, LTO bytecode stable, uh, but it's a lot of work, and yeah, we would get our life complicated. It's easier to break it every day. Yeah, and open SUSE we strip all the LTO bytecode for static binaries if you mm -hmm. want to distribute mm -hmm. static binaries. So. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, LTO at O2 is quite aggressive idea, <laughs> to say at least. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we got through the bypassing of ASM, and then I'm on the last two items, which are pretty easy to say. Uh, we still have uh, some features which are broken, and I know about it, and I didn't fix it because I'm lazy. Uh, so one of them are the global register variables, which are used pretty seldomly, but I know that uh, at P least P PHP P is PHP. using it. And uh, then we don't do labels, because if you have function labels, we don't have way how to make them global. And if you partition the program in the way that two partitions need to access the same label, uh, we have currently no way how to do it, so we end up with error in the uh, linking or somewhere, you know, with undefined symbol, uh, which is affecting some things like kernel or, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, something which uh, has a correct solution. You know, we should add these labels into the symbol table, and we should modify all the backends to make global labels. Uh, but yeah, it's a work, so that needs to be uh, that needs to be done. Well, then, if you want to put in the symbol table, you have the naming problem again, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then it would be the same symbol as everyone else. It would have the same set of problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, but there might be a different function somewhere else which uses the same label name. Oh, uh, yeah, but... You uh, can't just globalize them. 
that's not a problem because uh, you, know, you know when we build the symbol table and if the labels would be in the symbol table, the VPA would know that there's a clash and it, it would rename if it was globalizing. Uh, you know, the, the error okay, only, happens. For, yeah, only yeah. for the LTO parts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's, that's, so you don't mean the object yeah, for yeah. the symbol table. Yeah, so we need, we need kind of a way to, to yeah, put labels into symbol table and get them to go the complicated way instead of being on the site yeah. Yeah, right now. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know how many real world projects are running into it. I know that Firefox has one uh, unit which is doing this and kernel is using it for uh, the bug function. So you now the bug is having label which is having taken address off and that causes some trouble. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so uh, also I don't know if there's someone who cares about the warnings uh, here, but the warnings which we output from LTO are really quite cryptic. You know, you get uh, completely mangled names and uh, and stupid internal representation things. And uh, people you know, work on some things like uh, static analyzer. So I think we want to solve it, but I don't know how, because we no longer have front ends to output it nicely. So uh, I think one of the issues, I'm, I'm not sure if it's fixed or not, is that of course the object files do not always exist in the same location as the sources. Mm -hmm. So often you link uh, objects that were compiled from different current working directories and so uh, all of the file locations we have which use eventually relative paths do not really make sense at link time anymore. Um, I'm not sure if we kind of if there, if there is even a good solution for that at least the link the linker command line should have mm -hmm. the paths to the object files and if, yeah, at least, and if at least those live at the place where the source lives, uh, kind of it could normalize all these uh, mm -hmm. file name paths. Because one of the part of the crypticness is <coughs> probably that that libcpp fails to open the original file name, and, exactly. and all so, the mm -hmm. nice citing of sources no longer works. And instead, you get the the dumped gimple as as expression that's diagnosed, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. of course difficult. Yeah, <laughs> Another thing is that uh, some frontends, especially the C++ frontend, have their own pretty printers. Mm -hmm. and exactly, and those are missing. You would need to either merge them all, depending on the language of of the statement or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. translation unit they came from. Yeah, yeah. You, you know the language because you have uh, linkers, uh, pointers to the translation unit declarations, but it would mean yeah, moving all the dumpers from front ends to, uh, to middle end, plus keeping all the information. You know, We simply throw yeah. away the information so, so we, which is needed to print the warning. We, 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 so we, we, we throw away all the, the length specific tree data and of course the C++ front end pretty printer uses them those data quite heavily, which is mm -hmm. also if you like enable free lang data, you uh, you yeah. just get crashes if you do not redirect the pretty printers as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we want to stream all the language specific tree data for different front ends at the same time. It would have to be way. done somehow on the site, right? You know, well, the front end pretty printer would have to know how to pickle the data by itself, yeah. not into the global stream. So I, eventually, the pretty printer could pickle from the early debug and diagnose things via the debug. Mm -hmm. We could also just be realistic and remove all warnings at, after LTO. I mean, not emit anything. Why? It was already compiled one time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My, my opinion is that, you know, we have some warnings which are useful on LTO time, well, which I, because I added the ODR, you know, the one definition rule warnings. <laughs> and those cannot be output elsewhere. But we have all these uninitialized variables and other things which come out in, in this crazy way. Uh, so yeah, like for that's... audio warnings, I'm simply using the mangler because uh, I know the simple name, so I know how to demangle because I know it's C++ specific. But uh, yeah, I don't know how to implement a good, uh, good general warning. Yeah, exactly. So we maybe should just give up on that. Yeah, 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 well, that was sort of 
my long uh, term opinion that we should give up on the late warnings, but it seems to not be happening, right? People add more late warnings and now we have static analyzer, which is also using the LTO uh, bytecodes. So I, I, I really think in, instead of streaming all the information from the front ends and kind of using the original routines, um, it, it might be worth to, worth to try to see if one can emit, one can do the pretty printing from the debug info. Mm -hmm. Just just see if there, there should be enough information there to like That's print true. the template declaration. declaration. And we have to point out to the debug information for the entity, mm -hmm. not of course for the whole source line. That's maybe the issue, but at least for the declarations, so that they don't come up in weird dot LTO whatever uh, format. Um, and also things like template argument information. Of course, the actual arguments of the function call, mm -hmm. they are they are only in in the Gimple, right? And then you. Well, I don't see a good way to print those nicer, but but that's already the issue with with the the, the non-LTO case when when you uh, disable the the libcpp print the original source line thing, right? You, you basically get that back that situation. Mm -hmm. That that dumping the trees is going to be uglier than citing a source line. So so my my. First idea would be, well, try to make that printing of the source line work again somehow yeah, by, yeah. by fixing the path to, pickling, the, pickling the, to the original uh, file, sources. Di yeah, direct, the directory of the object file compilation yeah. and, and combining it together. Yeah, that's definitely. So I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure. In, in one end, you know, uh, well, we have pretty printer, but what, what the printer can do, right? Uh, well, it knows it's outputting for a run function name, but uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't so, know. So I, I guess for, for all the clones and, and strange function names, you can just print the ultimative origin of the clone, so basically mm -hmm. the original function name, and maybe say, well, this was actually IPCP clone, if we, if we care. Yeah, yeah. Well, but we some have some logic of this in the manga, right? You know, the manga, when it needs, uh, sees the clone, yeah, it actually sure. uh, all yeah. puts it nicely. It says, this is a clone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe we can just share the logic and, and do something like this. Because, yeah. yeah, those warnings are also very confusing. You know, if you, if you specialize the function and then some warnings come out for the specialization, uh, it's sort of confusing yeah. uh, for users to figure out why the warning is there. So, but, but I, really, I think the printing of the source line would be the first thing that we should try to make working, working in more cases. Yeah, yeah, for, 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 so, for, for very simplistic mm -hmm. cases, I think it works. If you compile and link the in single the file directory. in yeah. the same directory, mm -hmm. I think it works. But most projects have object files in multiple directories. They recurse into the directory, they compile mm -hmm. in that one, and then they link from some other directory, and then it breaks. Yeah, the other thing is that we have this location IDs, uh, which are bound limited because, uh, so, and uh, the libcpp sometimes run out of the you know, IDs, and then it starts throwing away the location information, so the oh, warnings are coming on the wrong spots. Don't we drop columns for that? Uh, yeah, you know, it is using some kind of fancy formatting, you know, so the locus ID is something like the, the main uh, position plus some bits are used to offset it by you know, some lines and some columns, so we don't have so many locuses. And that is, uh, you know, then we run out of out of them, and then we start compressing the info and throwing away the location information. So, uh, yeah, it comes out uh, of the wrong spots. Yeah, too bad. Mm -hmm. So that's also something to to look into. Well, we need 64-bit location T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that consumes a lot of extra memory because uh, yeah, makes every tree bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know, I wonder if we can uh, figure out what other features should we edit to LTO. So is there something uh, strictly missing or is LTO perfect?
Okay, we have, yeah, can you pass the... <laughs> so, I'm using the LTO stuff for the offloading, mm -hmm. which yeah. is, I mean, it's kind of like uh, abusing it rather than using it, I guess, but we, I would like eventually to be... And and so so there's just the driver bit missing, linking all the many things together. So uh, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, so so currently, when you do LTO and offload, you basically get regular objects for the offload part, right? Yeah. From the lib offload whatever scripts that are different for each target, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of a mess. Yeah, so, uh, and, and then, yeah, what's basically missing is that, that you, you probably would do the offload bytecode split at the regular LTO VPA stage instead of, because then, then you don't have the separate set of object files initially, but you have a, have a more central way and, and also get all the link than you would have in the original build, you do have the linker arguments for the offload parts, right? With extra minus off VL offload, whatever, link libgomp, yeah. right? So they are all in the original program link command somehow. And you have this all in one place, so the, the more natural place to split out the, the, the byte code for the offload target would be the VPA stage where we produce the LTRANS objects for the regular compile. Then you have everything in one place and you have a single point in the driver where you know the whole thing to link with. So I, I think it's, it's a pulley a driver issue, basically. We also have slight issues that we can get the LLVM in there. I say, we don't have, we, I don't quite know how that's going to break, how that will break it, but we use the LLVM linker because there is no bin utils for GCN and, well, by all means, you can don donate the funds <laughs> and the manpower, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you, you can keep up with all future architectures. Please go ahead. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure how broken that is. But we, we do have control over the MOOC offload, which is which sits in the spot of the uh, LTO um, driver. I forget what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, thank you. Uh, for the LTO, I think it might be easier if if the LTO front end could 
for the offloading right LTO again. So, so you know, turn the LTO you got from host, the offloading LTO into real uh, AMD GCN LTO, and and then then just do the linking with with the plugin and except for LVM linker. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So it's going to be a separate invocation of the different compiler anyway, right? So so that it's going to use a different linker in the end might not matter, who knows? Um, because I, I did the, the 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 offload binary code later is is in the, still in the same executable as the or, as the original program, right? Or, in, or are they in, in, in a shared library? Or how is it in reality? So how so so how, how if if you use LLD for linking, does my program also need to use LLD for linking because I have the the, the program object files and the offload object files are they linked together into one elf container or, I, or do, do we have actually two elf containers one with the offload code and one with the program we, we take the offloading uh, elf file or uh, or something else ptx text file and stick it into a data section inside of the elf for the host and, and then there can be multiple for the different arches and so on. Yes, so the, the, all the library files will be ordinary AMD um, architecture um, dot O files with normal, you know, in any way, every way normal LTO sections. But the, but the host x86 has multiple LTO sections. There'll be the x86, um, uh, um, x86 LTO and then there's the AMD um, not actually LTO, and then NVIDIA not actually LTO, but they're all the same kind of thing inside almost. Um, and you have, and then the, the somewhere, I'm not sure exactly where, where it goes, there's a, there's a mysterious black box in which it figures out, oh, this stuff has offload things and calls milk offload, and that's where I see the stuff come back to me again. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you. Okay, one of the things which I have also forgot to add to the slide uh, is that uh, I was thinking that maybe the libg Fortran and uh, comp might be built with LTO and shipped as the bytecode uh, because those are the things which might benefit from inlining and other optimizations. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if there is interest in doing that or I know how important it would be. So. <laughs> so the one I'd like to see in line and, and LTO at first would be the, the string and memory function so we don't have to keep all of the move pieces around and all of the built-in optimizations. Yeah, yeah well, the, but if you have typical memcopy implementation, it's written in assembly, so yeah, but that's the other thing that, yeah, we could do better register allocation if, uh, yeah. So, if so, we made it part of uh, libgcc and libgcc was uh, lto bytecode yeah. but that's also work to do yeah, yeah i mean the string compares for for mm -hmm. uh, dry stone could be completely handled by that given that we see the length of the string then a string and that which has been lined for example just taking one trivial example mm -hmm. yeah So as for uh, LTOing libg Fortran, I, I think it it it's, it does make sense to to have fat objects in the static library, mm -hmm. and at least at the times I was doing HPC, everybody linked statically for the extra one percent uh, of speed. But I guess it is no longer no longer a thing since now you even have containers around your HPC applications. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm not sure if, if anybody still links statically, like libg Fortran statically, probably not. 
So that because we we have the, the static library always in sync with with the compiler you use, while the, the installed libg Fortran shared object might be from a newer compiler, where we then get into the issue of uh, not compatible bytecode. Yes. Where uh, we can we can of course what what we maybe definitely should do is try to be a little bit more forgiving when that happens and not crash, but instead just not use the bytecode in that case. Like, yeah, that, that, that requires help. more, even more strict versioning of the mm -hmm. bytecode than we do now. So I think, I, I'm, I'm not sure what actually happens because the, the LTO plugin will just say, well, I can handle it and then it's too late to give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, what happens, yeah. So <laughs> the, it needs to be the LTO plugin knowing the GCC version it's going to invoke because of course, you only have a single LTO plugin that drives multiple versions of GCC. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's not as yeah, trivial. wants to say something. <laughs> but maybe to, to do more detailed uh, LTO versioning, we would need to do automation because as humans, we will never do it yeah, right. We always get it so wrong. perhaps yeah. use the debug info and, and find out when we change some important data structures and stuff like that. Just do it as ugly as we do it with the PJA checksum. Just checksum this CC the LTO one. I mean, it's it's going to change with with every minor change. But well, that's it in that case. Or like uh, at SUSE, we are no longer um, checksumming CC one, but we are just using the the, the uh, build ID as checksum which is good enough and is already produced. Perhaps, uh, perhaps it might be better to, to just check some of the LTO uh, dumpers and all the headers they depend on mm -hmm. after pre-processing yeah. so that we, we don't care about macros that mm -hmm. don't expand. So check some, check some after pre-processing. Uh, but there are also the summaries of the IPA pass. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I was a little bit, you know, hoping a long time ago that we will eventually get the intermediate language streams stable uh, between releases. Uh, not completely, but at least uh, you know, not breaking it every minor release. And uh, but yeah, for the optimization summaries, uh, you know, each time you improve the optimizer, you know, the summary needs to be revisited. So there is the option to fall back to recomputing them if uh, the summary version doesn't match. You know, you just load it at the VPA stage and analyze again. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not very good either. So that, yeah. that was my original plan. So I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, I guess it, it, was, it would kind of enlarge the, the format in, in, in some way because it would then help if it's self-descriptive so that you can actually see, oh, here is a declaration of bytecode version X, so I, has to, I still have code to read that in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we can, we can simply do major and minor versions uh, for, uh, for each of the summary sections independently, but we would need to yeah. maintain it. So, well, so, so take but, care but, of it by yeah. hand, which is a lot of work, or have some automated yeah. testing. So uh, what I said earlier, it doesn't, it, it doesn't solve the issue with the LTO plugin which eventually needs to decide if we can handle the object or not. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and giving up later is currently not an option. So you, yeah, you, you yeah. get an error you, in Yeah, with some you don't need to give up, you can recompute. Uh, it will be compiled slowly, but it would compile. And Jakub wants to speak. Yeah, can you pass to Jakub? <laughs> No, you should go to France. So, on, on the release branches, what changes very often are the options. Yes. And uh, every month or two, at least one of the major platforms adds mm -hmm. and removes or adjusts an option. And that, yeah, that's because awesome. we, we, we refer to those in the optimizations then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, so for a long time, I was hoping that I will implement streaming the options by name instead of enum values and stream only those which are changing from the defaults, which would make the format more stable. But uh, I never got around implementing it. Uh, yeah, I, I, th I, think the, the, I think there was a patch that 
did something like we, we do for the offload modes, basically emit a mapping table from string to ID, mm -hmm. so that we can still stream the IDs in the in the target optimization node, but we have a way to rewrite them to the current names that would be a sort of, I, th I think there was a patch from Red Hat that does mm -hmm. something like that, or, or was it or was it for plugins? Uh, I, I think it was for plugins, right? <laughs> because they have the same issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I was adding some some table to to make uh, plugins able to to cope with with the changes in in the API. Yeah, we could. Yeah, and it could be just just some section somewhere in the LTO that uh, gives you the mapping, and so you can use it later on. And uh, you could compare it if if it has the same mapping as as myself, then I avoid all the translation tables, and if it has different, then, then I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I think we have run out of time, so uh, I think we can bring the rest of the discussion offline, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, I think it is right. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so thank you for coming, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, we, we have announced uh, the boat, so uh, I you know uh, the original location which I sent in the arrival information email was is changed. So you know you need to check the address which is on Wiki, and uh, Sarah will send a new email, or maybe she already did. And on the next break, I would like to make a group photo in the in the bottom room. So please come to the bottom room, you know, ten minutes before the end of the next break, and we can we can take a picture. So yeah, that's it. So thank you. <laughs>